Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. I'm going to start this review by first stating that, while I am aware of the legendary, groundbreaking, and highly influential anime Ghost in the Shell, I haven't actually seen it. Alright? My anime expertise begins and ends with Cowboy Bebop. And while I loved that film, I'm not even all the way through that series yet. Only so many hours in a day, you know. So I can tell you that the property Ghost in the Shell isn't as precious to me as it is for a lot of you, and I'm not going to pick apart whether they got certain characters right or address the whitewashing controversy that invariably follows projects like this around. No! I'm going to judge this new film on its own, with no baggage whatsoever. So, purely as a fan of good cinema, walking in blind, how was Ghost in the Shell? Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Could have been great. Had some problems, but overall it was solid and engaging throughout its running time. So, what's it about? Well, you got Scarlett Johansson bringing her megawatt star quality to the role of Major, who has a human brain and a soul, aka the ghost, contained within a powerful and completely synthetic manufactured body, aka the shell. You got it? This is a near future where humans can enhance themselves with technology and realistic robots are everywhere. I was ready to jump right into this one, having just seen Blade Runner coincidentally the week before. Now, Major is one of the leaders of Section 9, which is a group of soldiers who hunt down cyber criminals, and while on the hunt for a dangerous terrorist named Kuze, she begins to experience glitches, flashes of memory from her life before, and her investigation reveals some shocking truths that, uh, all right, all right, you know what? If the plot sounds familiar, it's only because various sci-fi franchises have just sort of cherry-picked the best parts of this story over the last 20 years, so I'm not going to hold that against this movie, not when the story and its characters are still pretty compelling, despite having been ripped off ever since. Now, the story sure could move a little faster, especially in the early going, but by and large, the characters and the relationships between them are fascinating. I just wish they'd gotten on with it a little faster. Here's what I mean when I say that this movie could have been great. When certain developments happen near the middle and again at the end of the movie, they have real impact. And they're executed beautifully, but they do feel a little rushed given the languid pace of all that has happened before. But here's the good thing about that languid pace. It allows you to get immersed fully into this world. And this world is a doozy especially realized in full eye-popping IMAX 3D. The production design, the exquisite framing of every shot. This world feels foreign, but beautiful and lived in and complete. It's just a fascinating place to be. I also want to make special mention of the score by Clint Mansell and Lorne Balfe. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Which reminded me of Daft Punk's awesome score for Tron Legacy a few years back. This music is propulsive and wonderful, and I can't wait to buy the album, you know, when they actually release one. Come on, what is with this music inspired by the movie crap that they're trying to sell me? Come on, release the score already. I'm dying to give you my money for it. Now, back to the movie. While Ghost in the Shell is taking its time building that world, it's also using that time to solidify the characters. Now, hiring Juliette Binoche to play what could have been a sort of throwaway part was actually a masterstroke because she really makes a meal out of her character here and brings a lot of weight to some key turns of the plot. Ditto the rest of the supporting cast, which is made up of a cadre of international character actors who all serve the story well without being caricatures. Well, except for this guy. Cutter. He's a little one-note, but he certainly is the exception that proves the rule here. Now, one thing that underwhelmed me, which is surprising given the fact that I just raved about how well this movie was shot, is the action scenes. They feel sort of incidental here, not very exciting. Now, there are shootouts, there are explosions and beatdowns, some of them with very high stakes indeed, but they're just not staged very well by director Rupert Sanders, who previously directed Snow White and the Huntsman. The movie as a whole looks cool, the story is compelling and well acted, and I was engaged with almost all of the characters, but if some of those action scenes had been paced and shot for maximum thrills and impact, well, we'd be talking about this movie like a classic, like The Matrix or something which I don't need to tell you, was one of the films that ripped off a few things from the original source material. If this movie had had action scenes as exciting as anything in The Matrix, well, this would be an extra large bag of popcorn movie for sure. As it is, I award Ghost in the Shell a large bag of popcorn. It's not the mind-blowing action movie the ads would have you believe, but it is a beautiful, richly detailed science fiction drama that delights the eyes and ears, and occasionally flirts with greatness. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there. And by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Ghost in the Shell in the comments as well. Did you love the source material? Was this a letdown? Was it impressive? Let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. And you may have created me, but you cannot control me.